What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another Twin Motion tutorial for you. So in the last few videos we've been talking about how to use Twin Motion, a real-time rendering program that makes it really easy for you to bring your SketchUp models in and create great looking renderings really quickly. So this tutorial series is a partnership with Epic Games to get the word out about Twin Motion, specifically because it's available for free through the end of November. So if you go to the link in the notes down below and download it. Um, you can download the current version and that is yours to keep. So this is a pretty great opportunity because there's not a lot of uh, free great real-time rendering programs out there. So I would say go follow the link in the notes down below, download Twin Motion, and then come back and watch the tutorial. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this video, I wanted to focus more on the landscape and terrain options contained inside of Twin Motion. So one of the things that a lot of people aren't actually aware of is that there's actually a suite of terrain editing tools built into the program. And I think the reason that people don't know that that's there is because when you first open this up, you just get this kind of like default ground plane. So you can see how if I click on this, this has this little arrow right here, and uh, you can't really tell or you can't edit that with any kind of terrain tools. So what you need to do is you need to specifically bring in an editable piece of terrain called a landscape. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on this starting plane and I'm just gonna delete it out. So now I have nothing in my rendering. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over into our library on the left hand side and we wanna find the option for vegetation and landscape. Well inside of vegetation and landscape there's the option for landscapes. And so you can actually use this to bring in an editable terrain inside of Twin Motion. So there's two options. There's either the flat option, which if I drag this in, this is gonna tell me it's preparing the terrain, and then it'll show up with a flat terrain that I can edit using different tools inside of Twin Motion. We'll talk more about these in a second, but you can see how there's actually tools that you can use in order to edit the way that this looks. So your options are either the flat, or you can also bring the rocky grasslands in. So the rocky grasslands just has a little bit more detail. You can see how this actually has some hills and other things associated with it. So if I bring my camera down, you can see how this is like having mountains in the background. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change my context really quick, um, just so that I don't have a city in the background because that looks a little bit weird. I think probably I'm going to go with the mountains background for right now. And we'll just kind of rotate this around a little bit. Um, but now what we can do is because we've brought this landscape terrain in, we can now edit that. So if you click on a piece of terrain, either the flat or the rocky grasslands, and note that they replace each other so you can't have them both in here at the same time. But if you click on this landscape, you can see how you get two different options down at the bottom of the page. The first is the option for tools to sculpt the terrain. The second is the option for tools to paint the terrain. And we'll talk about both of these one at a time. So to start off, let's go ahead and let's click on the sculpt option and look at what pops up. So if you come in here and you go to sculpt, you can see how you get a number of different brushes at the top of the page that do different things for editing your terrain. So for example, just very simply, if I was to use this raise function and click and hold my mouse, you can see how what this is gonna do is this is going to raise the terrain inside of Twin Motion. So you can see how as I hold, this is just raising the terrain as long as I hold my mouse button down. And one thing you'll notice about this is once your terrain gets to a certain steepness, it no longer shows grass on it, but it's instead rocky, which is kind of the same as real life where if something's not very flat, a lot of the time it's more rocky because vegetation can't grow on it. And so all of these tools do different things. So for example, the dig button is going to lower your terrain. So you can see how you can use this to lower this down right here. And note in the same way, if you click and hold this, so if I was to fly over here, and click and hold my mouse button down, you can see how as you go deeper, this creates kind of a deep canyon looking thing with rock on the sides. So you can use this to create both canyons as well as mountains and flat areas and other things like that as well. So these other tools do different things too. So the smooth function, for example, takes an area that's bumpy like this one, and it kind of smooths it out. So you can see how I was able to smooth off the rocky points that were up here. Um, the noise is great for like randomizing. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So it's great for randomizing 
your terrain and your ground. So if you want something in here that's kind of random and not flat, you can use this in order to do that. So that's great for randomization. And then the erode function is gonna do kind of the same thing. Let's make a bigger mountain. So let's say we were to make a giant mountain over here like this, and then we were to use the erode function on maybe a smaller point. We could use this to erode this point up here down. You can see how that works kind of in the same way that the smooth function does, but all it's doing is it's just kind of eroding that back. So you can use that for erosion. And then um, the flatten, I use a bunch for if we're creating like building pads or something like that. You can see how you can flatten this ground out in here. So if you wanna make like flat pads or flat areas, the flatten function is gonna be a good function for that. And so one thing I wanna point out about this is you can adjust both the size of the brush by using this slider right here, as well as the intensity. So if you turn your intensity up, then uh, things are gonna happen a lot faster when you hold your mouse. So you can see how as I hold my mouse down, if, my, if I've turned my intensity up, this is gonna create and do these things a lot faster than if I had my intensity set to something low. So if I wanted to I'm do this very slowly, you can see how I could turn my intensity down. So generally speaking, unless you're creating like mountain ranges or something like that really quickly, you're probably gonna keep your intensity down rather than up. And then the last thing that you can do here is you can use different brush types. So for example, if you wanna randomize or make something look a little bit more natural, you can use like the stains function in order to adjust this. So you can see how when you do this, this is only going to raise up your terrain in the area where that brush is. So that stains function or the blobs function, both only raise parts of different areas inside of here. So you can see how that's great for creating random type shapes. So, and the brush shape, your brush shape works with all of your different uh, terrain editing tools. And so once you have your terrain set up kind of the way that you'd like, and let's go ahead and let's make like a ramp or something like that. So, or maybe a path. So let's say that I wanted a path running down through here. I could just use the erode function to kind of erode this down like this so I have a flat area. So let's say this right here was going to be my path coming down this hill. Well now, what we could do is we could come in here with the other set of tools in landscape, the paint tools, in order to paint that in with the material. So the paint tools allow you to paint in different materials on top of your terrains. So you can see how when I click on the paint button, I've got four different ground options in here that I can paint in. So let's say for example that I wanted there to be like a gravel road or something like that coming down this hill. You can see how just by clicking and dragging, and I'm just holding my mouse down, I can paint that in here onto this surface. And you're gonna notice that there's four options in here for materials. You can only add four materials to your terrains at once. So you can switch out different materials just by dragging this in here and swapping them out. So like for example, if I wanted to replace my, uh, my cobblestone or whatever with one of these materials, I can just drag this over top of that, but you are limited to four of those. Um, there, you can't have more than four painted on your landscapes at the moment. And then it has tools over here that are basically the same as the tools that we were using for the sculpting. So you can adjust your diameters and other things like that using these sliders. But note that you can adjust the kind of rock material in here by replacing this last material. So you can see how I can make this smaller rocks or mossy rocks. Um, generally speaking, you want this to be a material with kind of a larger um, material repeat so that you don't get that tiling in here. But if you want your hills to just be grassy, you can go ahead and add the grass in here. So you can kind of play around with this in order to get different effects. So you could also use this to add snow to all of your mountains or ice. So it's actually a pretty versatile setup. And then you could do the same thing with your, uh, with your brushes to add randomization. So if you wanted some randomness to the materials on the side of your path, you can see how I can use this to kind of paint those in where they're not super uniform. They're kind of showing through in here. So you can use these tools to really set this up um, so that it looks the way that you want it to look and it's really easy to use. One thing I would say is if you have very specific
requirements for your terrain inside of like your SketchUp models, I would recommend modeling the specific things like hills and things like that inside of SketchUp. And then when you bring your model in, I recommend just I recommend just editing your terrain to kind of sync up with that inside of Twin Motion. Now I want to talk a little bit about the nature tools and what you can do to add vegetation inside of your renderings. So this is a model that I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse and brought in from SketchUp and I just swapped out some materials. So I haven't done a whole lot for this example. Um, we're just going to use this as kind of a quick example, but this is the Pavilion by Daniel Ong. If you want to download that, um, I just search for that name inside the 3D warehouse. You can download that and follow along. But what I want to do is I want to talk about how to add different grass and vegetation options. So there's a few different ways that you can add grass and vegetation. So the first is you can just go into your library and let's say you wanted a tree in here. Um, you could just drag a tree in and that works fine. I mean, you can see how I can place that tree wherever I want to, but the problem is, let's say that I wanted to add like a forest of trees in the background. Well, that gets really, really complicated really fast because there's a lot of different things you have to, there's a lot of trees that you have to add in here. So you could definitely bring these in here if you wanted to and just kind of randomly place them. So I could bring in a bunch of different trees and create a forest that way. The problem with doing it that way is it's just really time consuming. Well, what we can do instead is we can use the vegetation tool contained inside of the nature settings at the bottom of the page. So what the vegetation tool is going to do is that's going to allow us to drag in those different models. So let's say I wanted this to have a number of different elms in it, for example, and I just wanted these to be kind of random elms, maybe some sycamores or something like that too. Well, let's say I wanted to random, randomly place a bunch of these trees in here. Well, instead of placing them manually, you can drag them into your vegetation tool. And so what you can do is you can come in here and you can do a shift click to select all of these different kinds of trees. And then you can see how you get an option to increase the diameter of this object. Well, now if I click inside of my model, this is going to randomly place trees in here um, based on the ones that I had selected. So you can see how I can bring this all the way around here and I can use this to add context and trees all the way around my model really easily. And so you can do this with different things. So you don't necessarily have to do this only with trees. You can also do this with things like grass and bushes and lower trees. So let's say that I wanted to just place I just wanted to randomly place some lower trees here in the background to kind of block this. Um, you can see how I can use that to place those other trees as well. But not only can you place trees, you can also use it to place things like grass. So this is how we're going to add grass to our twin motion renderings. So if you go into your landscape, if you go into your library under vegetation and landscape, you can see how there's an option here for grass and flowers. Well, if you've tried to just drag that in, you can see how that brings in one piece of grass, which is great, but it would take forever in order to place all of the different pieces of grass um, in here at once. Well, what you do instead is you use the vegetation tool and you drag your grass in. So let's say I wanted to add, I probably want a longer grass in this situation. So maybe like a dry wild grass. So I would just drag this in right here and then I could use my paintbrush tool in order to paint that in. And notice that you can adjust the density that objects are placed as well. So if you want like less trees or something, you can drag this down. I'm gonna leave it at 100% for my grass, but I'm gonna use this just by clicking and you can see how I can place grass in here just by clicking and dragging. You can see how adding that in here is really easy. So you do need to be careful that you don't accidentally add that to like your roof or something like that. So that is one thing to be aware of when you're doing this, but you can see how you would use this tool in order to place that grass in here. And then you can reduce the diameter in order to um, work on more precision areas like this. So you could place this along the edge here, and then you could reduce your diameter just by clicking on this and adding a value. So like 10 feet, and then you can use this to kind of detail this in and then you can use the different kinds of edge grass or border grass in order to add the border in here. So I would add maybe this long grass borders and just add that right along this edge. So you can see how you can add detail in here using that border grass material. 
So not only can you use this to add things like grass, you can also use it to randomly place things like flowers. So let's say I wanted some poppies in this field. You can see how there's a number of different flowers or clover that you can add in here. So let's say we wanted some poppies and maybe some buttercups or something. We could click on this and then hold the control key to select the poppies as well. And you can use this to add those flowers in here. And you wanna be careful with your density on this one. So usually I end up placing this one pretty low because it places them um, it places a fair number of them, but you can see how that just kind of randomly places those into this grass. So you can use this to add that really easily. You could also use this to spread things like rocks. So if you wanted some rocks along your drive or something, you could drag those rocks in here and then do the same thing where you could select all three of these, maybe up your diameter a little bit and turn your density down. And then you could use this to randomly place things like rocks in your background. And then if you ever want to delete anything in here, you can just click on the erase button and just click and drag and make sure you have those objects selected, but you can use this to erase out things that you've placed in here as well. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how to use the different landscape and vegetation settings inside of Twin Motion. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Do you have any questions about any of this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every a little bit helps even if it's only a dollar a month so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below but in any case thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys